that's dope. This episode is sponsored by my good friends at Bullish. Stay tuned for more information on this amazing company later in the episode. Most people have cushy jobs with legacy financial institutions. Don't leave to take a huge bet on crypto, but that's exactly what Jason Urban did. He went to work with Mike Novogratz after selling his company to Galaxy, and now he is all in on crypto. He has no fear that this bear market will be different than anyone in the past and is definitely looking to deploy capital and start to buy more assets while prices are depressed. He'll tell you why. Somebody uh, j jokingly that I know tweeted something like, I, you know, uh, this is my first bear market in crypto. Uh, anyone who was here before, can you tell me what lesson you learned? And I said, don't check your portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Doesn't exist. Until, until, you're, <laughs> until you're ready to not do this anymore, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you're just like, I, I, I'm done, like, like this, is, this is it. Like, this is the game, right? You're, you're stuff that you have stuff that you love that's going to go to the moon, and some of it does, and some of it fizzles. And you can Aren't we all just out. spraying and praying anyway? Yeah, it's it, like, it's, all we need is one in ten. <laughs> exactly. It's, I don't it's, need it, to be like a 100% hit no, rate god tier no. trader. I just need one of these things not to suck. Well, I mean, <laughs> well it, 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 it's exactly right. And, and listen, even the good traders, like, I mean, I've been trading for 25 years. Like, it's, you know, it's, 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 you know you're going to win some, you know you're going to lose some. And I always jokingly say, you're never as good as your best day, and you're never as bad as your worst day. You're somewhere yeah. in the middle. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you said you've been trading for 25 yeah. years. Is there anything new in this one at all? No, I, this is, you know, you know what's new in this, in this one is that we've been telling, I say we, the crypto community has been telling a story. And the story is that this is a transformative technology. It's a transformative thing. And we finally got, we finally have the, have the TradFi people, you know, to buying in. And, and then the naysayers who are the, the last holdouts, they're saying, like, there's no way that this is for real. This is just fake internet money. And, 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 and now there's those people on the sidelines saying, ah, I told you so, I told you so. But you get that, you get that all the time. It's, it's, a, it's, part of, it's part of the game, right? Like, it's part of it. Like, and, and in a lot of ways, we are evangelists. We are telling a story and convincing people to, you know, to, to, to believe what we believe, right? I mean, that's really, if you think about it. And so, I mean, what's different? Maybe the, the people that are involved are a little more well-heeled than the, the, the previous group and the previous sure. group and the previous group. But listen, the asset class has also gone up substantially. So it, it, you would expect that. It's, it's, it's been de-risked. It's a real asset. I love being depressed at $30,000 Bitcoin. <laughs> yes, I remember, <laughs> I remember, I, I was just telling the story in 2018 and I'm sitting there and I'm like, so I gave up a good career trading, I, I, I could do this job in my sleep to come and do this and I've watched the thing just go like, like, a, like, like a rock off a cliff and I'm like, like it, I mean, 2018, it, there wasn't even an uptick until it hit 3,000. I mean, it was just like, phew. Yeah, it basically stayed at six. And yeah. they're like, okay, it's bottoming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. One more we, clip. We, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then you start to have that, well, what, did I, what have I done? You know? Um, but isn't that the best bottom signal? Yeah. Like when, when the true believers start, start to get a little bit of that self-doubt. Now, the thing is, you can never really like, you know, like, like it's funny. I don't have that self-doubt yet right now, so, so maybe there's more room to go, you know. But um, it's, it, it's as you think through all the things that, you know, we've gone through, the changes that have happened, like I remember having conversations with people and they're like, stables are the future. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, like the dollar is the thing, you know, and you're a doubter and then you're like, well, let me think about this and let me look at it. Oh, wow, you know, I never thought of it that way. I think the people that are successful in crypto have a malleable mind. Strong opinions yeah. loosely held. It's like, my, it's my, favorite, yes. it's my but, favorite saying because I think the most staunch Bitcoin believers, certainly in crypto believers, were the biggest doubters. Yeah. Even Sailor. Yeah. Right. Even Sailor yeah. was a massive skeptic, if not complete well, doubter. If you're an investor or you're a professional, you have to doubt. You know, the person who just says, I'm, I'm going to believe no matter what. And then, you know, like think about think about, you know, the different situations we've seen where people have, have turned huge bags into to de minimis bags because they didn't at least hedge along the way. They weren't responsible investors. They were 
you know, gamblers in a lot of ways. And so I think you have to, unless it's one of those spray and pray and we're all trying to, you know, look for, you know, outsized gains, I think you have to be a, a prudent investor. Like, I always believe that what, what crypto slash blockchain is going to do to finance is what the internet did to retail. Right when I was a kid, and I'm old, you'd go to J.C. Penney's, you'd get the catalog, you know, and you know, oh my, you know, and, and now it, now it's gone. It's it's all on the it's all on the internet. What what's going to happen with with finance is it's all going to go on chain or some form of crypto, and it's it, it really is the future. It's really where we're going. So, but most people who are in, in your p p position who traded other markets for 25 years, as you said, had sort of a cushy situation. <laughs> yeah. You didn't really need to take that risk. Most of them are not going to make that jump. No. Ever. No. But why did you? You know, it, I made a mistake early, early in my career. And the mistake was in the internet age, when I got into the markets, I was like, ah, this internet thing is great. This is, this is awesome for, you know, consuming information. I want to, you know, I don't need my Encyclopedia Britannica anymore. I've got Encarta and I just put this little CD in and, and it takes me to, you know, like, and, and, and I said, it's never going to be anything. And, and, you know, here you are fast forward 20 years and I show up and there's, there's 30 packages in front of my house every day and you don't go to bricks and mortar stores unless you, you have to. And, and I made that mistake and I, I said, I'm never going to make that mistake again. I'm not going to ever be so incalcitrant in my thought process that I'm not going to at least try to see the other side of the coin and what something can be. And so, you know, in my, in, in my time at DRW, when Cumberland was starting, and I remember being at a dinner with a couple of the Cum Cumberland guys, a handful of the lieutenants that were kind of, you know, running different things, um, and, and across, this is to tell you the year, across the table, a guy just turns to the person next to him and says, hey, I just bought 200,000 ETH for a quarter. Mm -hmm. Now, you're at a dinner with traders and somebody says, I bought 200,000 of anything. Whatever it is that you what were just, that? whatever you were just <laughs> talking about doesn't really matter anymore. It's like, you bought 200,000, like, it's like, you know, the old EF Hutton commercial, you know, when EF Hutton talks, somebody listens. When somebody throws out a 200,000, I bought 200,000 of anything, you, you stop and listen. And they were explaining to me, that I, you know, the guy said, you know, I bought 200,000 ETH for a quarter. I go, ETH, he's like, ether. And it's like, like the gas? Like, what are you, a dentist? <laughs> you know? And he's like, no, Ethereum. And he started to explain it to me. And, you know, I'm like, at first, my first reaction was, all right, this is just crazy internet money. Yeah, you're about and lottery. I, and, and then I started to, like, look into it and say, what is the, you know, what is this? And, you know, if you're a, a student of markets, a student, a student of economics, you understand the things, the chickens that are coming home to roost today with inflation and monetary policy, fiscal policy, the things that are happening, like people saw that, that was a slow motion train wreck for the last 15 years. So when you start to learn about it, you're like, wow, this is really interesting. And that was kind of what my first step in was like, okay, let me get in now. Um, and then I, I really started to buy it. And that's when I started a, a company called Drawbridge Lending which Galaxy ultimately acquired. And so, you know, at the time when I, when I started Drawbridge, I was thinking about an idea, like how do I get in the space? I was like, well, jump, you know, the jumps of the world, the towers of the world, you know, the people who have the fast twitch bots are just gonna unplug from S&P and plug into to crypto. Like, and arb the like, hell out of yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, well, it's like, oh. It's so like, inefficient. I mean, yeah, right. I was like, oh, I, I, could buy, I could buy twos and sell fours instantaneously. Like, like at some point, like, I, I recognized that, that was just going to go to here. Yeah. But I was like, you know, it's a bearer asset. People need to understand, people need, need the asset. They're going to want to borrow fiat against it. I didn't really think through at the time, like, well, people are going to need to borrow other crypto and, and, and different, because at the time it was really Bitcoin and ETH and everything else was kind of a, you know, what is this? Um, and so that was kind of like, then I, I, I went all in. I was like, I'm not going to do this trading thing anymore. I'm going to start this company and this is going to be, this is going to change the world. And that was really the, the start of Drawbridge, which was ultimately acquired by, by Mike and Galaxy. And that's how I came over in, in, in my, my role a couple of years ago. But, you know, and it was interesting because I'd already, I was doing a lot of business with Galaxy in that capacity. And it was kind of like one of those, well, maybe it makes sense to have you over here versus there. And so that was kind of, you know, how I made that jump from, from one, you know, I, I guess the difficult thing, and people ask this occasionally, is like, you know, why did, why did you sell to Galaxy? And one of the things that I, 
I, I thought through was like this concept of financial gravity. As we have these great revolutionary ideas, they tend to gradually coalesce around things. And do you want to be the first mover to coalesce or the last mover? And you know, I felt like the things that Galaxy was doing and continue to do, you know, we're putting us in a position for that next generation because we do touch the entire ecosystem. We aren't, you know, necessarily an investment bank in crypto, but we're, you know, pre-seed investors, seed investors, you know, as well as, you know, talking to pension funds who want to do things. It's like you kind of get the full spectrum. And if you think that the the technology is going to change the world, that was that's kind of the the iterations there. And there's no lack of capital still flowing in. It's, of course, it's a bear market, and it's like Andreessen Horowitz raises 4.5 billion, right? And so, but do you think that while things are depressed and while people are sort of forgetting about the market or having their doubts that it's actually the best time to? Oh, ab absolutely. I mean, that, that, that's one of the things that, you know, even, even being down here in Austin, we talked, you know, the team and like, hey, listen, we're here to help. Like, it's not like we're here from, we're here from, we're from the government, we're here to help, but we're here <laughs> to help. And so, you know, whether if, uh, call it a broken angel, somebody that, you know, listen, you can get caught off sides in markets like this. And so, you know, doesn't mean you're, you're not smart. It doesn't mean you're not thoughtful. It just means that situation went against you. Just means you're yeah. here, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's inevitable. <laughs> you know, and so, so our job is to step in and say, hey, we can, we can help. Like, let us help you, let us partner with you, let us, let us get you back on the, you know, so no, that comes with an equity component and it comes, you know, we're here to also succeed. And so from that standpoint, it kind of goes hand in hand, but to be, to be a, someone who's very familiar with the, the ecosystem, very familiar with what crypto is and say, okay, here, we're here to help. We're not just gonna write a check and walk away. We're gonna write a check and bring you in and we're gonna transact with you and we're gonna connect you to this portfolio company and it's gonna be a creative process as opposed to here's a lifeline, let's hope you make it and the spray and pray. Spray and it's pray. Like, you know, it's, it, we're, we're here very much to, you know, to help foster. And so right now is an outstanding time. You know, it's difficult because people um, are, in, in the other markets where we've had this happen, it hasn't been as disruptive in what I'll call TradFi. You know, for 20 years, the Fed hasn't moved interest rates, right. really. And now all of a sudden, it's, it's meaningful. I mean, mortgages are 6%, gas is $9 in places. Like the world is in kind of, and so that's when, you know, the old saying is when there's blood in the streets, buy. Like there's blood in the streets, on, in, in the in the the tradfi world, where, where where all of us crypto veterans have been hardened through through many cycles like this, where it's like, oh geez, I this oh again. sorry you're down thirty percent, <laughs> guys. Yeah. We did that in an hour. Yeah, that was that was last that was Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so, so there's a little there's a little bit of that too. So it's kind of a it is pretty wild seeing the Netflix, Facebook, Snapchats of the world do. You know, like low cap altcoin moves in ten minutes. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, we, yeah. we have this narrative that Bitcoin is too volatile. We can't get an ETF because Bitcoin yeah. is too volatile. And then so Facebook's like, hold my beer. Yeah. And in ten, <laughs> in ten minutes, ten minutes after hours, it drops thirty percent. And it's not a twenty four seven market where investors, yeah. especially retail investors, yeah. can react or hedge or do anything about that. Yeah. If it happens on a weekend, you're waiting until uh, Monday and, to react. Yeah. So, like, it and that's seems a terrible weekend too. I mean, that that's the other thing. I mean, it, it, there's nothing you can do. I, I, was, I remember when uh, Elon Musk, you know, posted the "Should I sell ten percent of my Tesla stock?" Yeah. poll on Twitter. It was a Saturday yeah. or Sunday, and you could see in real time. <laughs> Tesla trading on FTX yes. on the weekend and basically yeah. predict what was going to happen. happen. Exactly. So don't you think it's inevitable or at least necessary that we should not be we should not be conforming to the existing framework and that all of these should be catching up to what's happening in crypto? Oh, 100%. I mean, that's why I think that what, what crypto is going to do to to finance, like it's going to it's going to come like you can't you can't legislate away progress. Right. So. If, if we look at regulation and, and, the, and the walls that get put up to, you know, protect either a traditional system or cons constituents in that system, you can't, you can't, you can't put up a, put up a fence or make a rule that says you can't be better or we can't be better. Because over time, people will find a way to climb over the fence, under the fence, around the fence. Like, 
we will we will we we will win because we have a better mousetrap, and that's just humanity. That's just evolution. That that's what we are, and so when you think through that, that's where it's going to end up. Now, are we going to are we going to run into walls occasionally, and and you know regulators are going to come in and say no, you can't do that, or jurisdictions. I was I've been speaking a lot today about. You know what are we doing here as a country? You know we've always been this 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 shining beacon on a hill. You know this this home of innovation and progress. And here we are. I mean, so many of the crypto people that I came into the business with, you know, five six years ago, are like, I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm moving here. I'm moving there. Why are you leaving? Well, you know, my parents are 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 gone. I don't have anything holding me here, and I have a, a government that's actively working against me in some capacity, whatever field they're in. They're like, well, why do I want to be here? And if we drive the best and the brightest of us away, what what are we going to be left with, right? Like, innovation is going to happen somewhere else, and that's not good for for all of us because the United States is about progress. Is about you know an egalitarian society where we can all grow. If you've got a good idea and you work hard, you can make it. If we, if we send that offshore, what are, we, what are we doing? What are we, you know, that, that dream that we've all been sold is gone. I think a lot of people would say that dream is gone even before uh, we uh, sent it uh, away, yeah. especially when you look at inflation numbers and what's <laughs> happening to yeah. your average person or the percentage of people that even have exposure to any hard assets in the stock market and anything like that. But you have to imagine that yeah. Even in their uh, ignorance, <laughs> yes. legislators and regulators see that yeah. and can't ignore the fact at this point that this is. I mean, you think about the you think about the terrible bag that the the baby boomers have been dealt in in the sense, and, and not that they ha haven't been the cause of problems, but yeah. but they are the ones that vote. To be tr like, to be honest, and as a markets yeah. person, I look at like you look at demographics and you say, why is crypto going to win? Demographics, but. The, the boomers were the ones that made the stock market go higher. They were fed, you know, since the 1950s, buy stocks, 401ks, and and that was what what happened. Now all of a sudden you're gonna you're gonna give them 10% inflation. You're gonna raise rates to six seven percent, and you're gonna rug them on the stock market, and you're gonna sit there. And those are the people that are gonna vote. And what are they going to do? Are they going to embrace us or not? Now, the advantage of that is the millennials, which is the next big demographic push. You know, 92% of them, or some some crazy made-up statistic, is they've touched some form of cryptocurrency, whether it's through games or through. And know, they're just the, digitally native in general, exactly. so it's like it's not. It's there's no jump for them. Yes, and so that's that. That's what will ultimately save us. But what happens when the when the boomers start to vote? You know, nine dollar gas, and you know, the the house that they mortgage six ways from Sunday with a home equity line, and they're like, I don't have to work, and well, you know. We've made improvements in healthcare. You're going to live longer, and the bag that you have is not going to is, is not going to support you anymore. Well, we just did this over just about over a decade ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Did you learn anything? Well, the, 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 <laughs> that's the thing. We're just going to print more money and then have the same. Pro All the more reason why what, what what we have is is where you want to be. It's where. It's a natural hedge against inflation, and it's where the innovation is happening. Everybody knows that there are advantages to trading on both centralized and decentralized exchanges. But why not choose an exchange like Bullish that offers the best of both worlds? Bullish's total trading volume recently exceeded $25 billion in just seven months since they launched. And they have the best liquidity in the game when it comes to Bitcoin USD. Now, Bullish has released the first major upgrade to its liquidity pool technology with the introduction of a concentrated range-bound liquidity pool for the Bitcoin USD trading pair. This upgrade triples the order book depth within a range of 2%, making it one of the world's deepest Bitcoin USD trading pairs. This industry-leading order depth means you can trade confidently at scale with clearly understood price impact. You should check them out immediately at bullish.com slash Melker. Because really at the end of the day, the only way to really fix this is to, you know, to, to produce our way out of it. I read a statistic the other day that said the interest on the national debt in 2000 was higher than it is today, but the national debt today is exponentially higher. It's because interest rates have been zero. So now all of a sudden you're going you're gonna to multiply the number, you know, you go from 25 basis points to 50 basis points, you just doubled your debt payment. Now you're going to take it up to 3%, to 4%. To Where is that payment going to come from? Well, you can print more money, which is just going to create more of the same problem. Or you can raise taxes, which there's no, there's no political will for that. Mm -mm. Like, how, like the, the Fed's in a trick bag. And so, 
the only the, the real answer is to innovate your way out of it which naturally if you look at the world today you say where's the innovation happening where are the smartest minds in the space residing They're residing in our ecosystem and so if we can if we can get some regulatory clarity i'm not even saying like yeah there needs to be rails like you can't just go out and create a ponzi but like give us some give us some some regulatory clarity so that we can all go and build in this ecosystem and maybe we got a chance to earn our way out of 30 years of, of, of mistakes and, and political ill will, like that's. I mean, it feels to me like the sentiment right now is even bad certainty would be better <laughs> than this uncertainty. Well, <laughs> y yes, bad certainty is. I don't mean yeah, like a, yeah, any I, attempted <laughs> outright ban yeah. or whatever, I but mean, like. you see what's happening with miners in New York and you're like, what's going on? I, as far as I've seen, the governor hasn't signed it yet. But probably by the time <laughs> this comes out, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll I, definitely know. Uh, my, my, one of my best friends has a house on Seneca Lake, which is right next to uh, Greenidge Minor. Yeah. And they had published this story locally that they were boiling the lake, and I happened to be there. And I was like, this lake is freezing. <laughs> but I don't know what you guys are talking about, but it gives you an idea of, of just of how this, nonsensical yeah. sort of what they're uh, proposing is. I'm like, this is a, there's a submarine base in the middle of this lake. It's so deep. <laughs> they're not yeah, boiling they're it. Boiling anything. Yeah. But I, I really think that there are people who haven't done the work and believe those things. It, it, you know, I, I was on a panel earlier and somebody brought up ESG. And I said, the issue isn't ESG. We have lost, as an industry, lost the narrative. More energy is spent playing video games than it is, you know, mining cryptocurrency. People aren't up in arms about the PlayStation 5s that you couldn't get, you know, for your for your kids. And Christmas it, lights, man. Yeah. Yeah. Tumble dryers. Yeah, I mean, there, it, it, there, there's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, we just have lost the narrative. And so now when you lose, you can either fight it or you can say, fine, we'll embrace it and we'll show you why you're wrong. And that's what we're going to have to do as an industry. But, you know, turning off an entire state's worth, you know, where you have hydroelectric and everything else like that seems a little extreme to me. But we have to, we have to embrace it. We have to find a way to work with it. And then, and then prove through facts facts and numbers and circumstances like this is the truth like the truth is that it doesn't change are we going to rally against video games now no no so but we've lost that narrative right and it feels speaking of narratives it feels like in crypto we have these like six month periods of <laughs> yes. uh, DeFi summer yeah. nft summer metaverse yeah. right and then they obviously we have this sort of mini bubbles and this cool off but where are you guys looking to deploy what are you excited about uh, in the next six months, year, 18 months, where do you think we're going to see real innovation? And even which things do you think were sort of nonsense and, no, and crypto doesn't fix this? Well, here, you know, I, I think when you think through it, you know, maybe some of these ideas were 80% right and they weren't the, you know, the 100%. They were, and so I think what you're going to see is more of the same over the next six months. But what we're looking for are people that are, are taking it and putting a little bit different twist on it in a way that is, that is meaningful and is going to change things. You know, we know regulation is coming. Like, it has to. You know, you, you can't make $60 billion just go to zero and not have regulators show up and say, Guys, what happened over? And here? they were here long before that. That yeah. was just we just gave ourselves a swift kick. Yes, that was that, that was that was like oh, like, hold my beer, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you think that's bad? Watch this. It, you know, like so, you, you have to expect regulation to come. So things that at least are more regulatory compliant and that are not you know overtly thumbing their nose at regulators, but willing to work with that. You know, you look at talk about DeFi. You know, one of the issues that us as a regulated institution, as a publicly traded company, have to be very thoughtful around is, is AML KYC and, and how do you interact? So people who are looking at ways to, to do that compliantly and to get on chain compliantly is important to us because that we see those like, wow, that will open up the spigots to, you know, $15 trillion of money here or, you know, whatever it is that's going to ultimately flow in. That's kind of the, you know, I think things that are interesting to us. So it's pretty clear for you, actually, you sort of, everything is already funneled down to a very small bucket of what you guys can even really well, reasonably it, look at. It, no, I mean, we, we, we look at everything, we invest in everything. Yeah. Um, but what will, you know, so if you think about the, 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 the breadth of Galaxy, I mean, we, everything from principal investments to, you know, helping pension funds trade their exposure to crypto, like it, it truly is, you know, and one of the reasons why I, I was always drawn to them was like, you're touching every single part. We mine, 
We have validators. We, you know, we, we do capital formation through investment banking, things like that, where you're, you're seeing things and you're getting to see the, the really smart players, the players that are thinking about things the right way, as opposed to you know, being quick and fast. And I think that if nothing, this little, little cold, crypto cold spell we're having is gonna be an opportunity for everyone to retrench to, to, to rebuild, to, you know, we were all running so fast, and I would use the example of crypto in, in, in 21 and 22 was kind of like, in the early part of 22, was kind of like that inflation after the Big Bang, right? It was going so fast, you couldn't hold on. We were, everybody was trying to hold on to the four corners of the universe as it was going, you know, so fast. Now that we've kind of stopped, we have a chance to kind of tidy our shops. I think the smart places will do that and they'll focus. And you know the people who are still trying to hold on are going to get you know dragged down crazy. I think we're going to see the majority of hedge funds disappear. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that there's going to be a, a a portion of that. You know, and here we'll see those. What 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 I think is interesting is you'll see those hedge some hedge funds disappear, and then you'll see new ones either sprout up either from the same people. Or you'll see the TradFi universe, who's finally starting to, to, to really step in, fill that, fill that gap. And so I'm not concerned about it from a, from a business continuity perspective for the ecosystem, like the people that have built their businesses to service that, I think will be okay because, I mean, we see it. We see the TradFi people coming in. Now, yeah, some of it is like, you know, the tether, we, we jokingly at times, like, oh, the tether truthers want a short tether. And, oh, right, of course. You know, you, 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 you see that, and you're like, all right, like, it's not the same, you know, like, the, the world is different. Um, so, I, but I think you'll see them walk in. I think you'll see them step in, in a way. And maybe it is, uh, you know, you have to establish a short position in tether. And I say, hopefully it's not that they just show up to short everything. Well, I mean, but here. But, but, but then there'll be yields for people who need to borrow. Well, the, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they, gotta, they gotta borrow that money somewhere. Yeah, well, it, well, that there'll be yields, but, but just as importantly, they'll learn. And, and education is so important. The only way to do crypto is to do crypto. And you can read a book about it, but. I came in because I was trading and I wanted dollars, and then I eventually was like, wait, this stuff's actually yeah. uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then I got fully orange-pilled in my entire <laughs> life now is, is talking about. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think anecdotally that that's probably what happens to a lot of these yes. people. And, and yes, and that's why I'm not like concerned. Yeah, so yes, we'll lose, we'll lose hedge funds. A lot of these market-neutral funds that you know, see you know, 20, 30, 40% drawdowns or more, yeah, those guys probably don't make it out. But yeah. I think there'll be so many that will come in on the on the heels of that. You know, I was talking to to a large tra traditional custodian the other day, and they're like, "We have fifteen trillion dollars. Think about that. I think they got more money than China's GDP." Yeah. And they're like, "We're getting in the game, yeah. really." State Street or BNY? Yeah, or, yeah big players. Yeah. We're 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 here, and so you're like, "Okay, that's a real number." It, my concern as a trader is like. If that spigot gets turned on, where does all where does all that liquidity go? Like, because as much as you don't, as much market as you don't cap's like, not big enough. Well, to, well, to well that's the thing. That. As much as you don't like going from sixty to thirty, you don't want to go from thirty to three hundred. Yeah, that's great, but that's not healthy. That's not healthy for for people who are trying to build things that actually matter, like that are going to change the way we we do personal finance, professional finance, like a little muted volatility. Let's let's keep the sp let, let us build a little more before you turn the spigot on. I love that you casually said in passing, like, oh, trading for pensions, right? Yeah. Because the, 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 the grand question still remains, whether it means a spot ETF, what gets this endowment, the pensions, this sort of instant, the real big flood of money? And it sounds like uh, they're already they're, they're, the, touching they're, it. Yeah, they're, you know, the, 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 the camel's nose is under the tent, you know? Like, and, and when, when, does, when does that come in, right? Like, the, we're, they're already here. I mean, they've been here, it was tangential, it was, hey, I'm invested in this fund and this fund has exposure to crypto, so tell me about crypto. And then as they learn and they become educated, they're like, oh, this is actually interesting. I have a view on inflation or monetary policy or, or you know, so on, and this actually is the, the, the purest way to make that, that play. Well, let, me, let me get in, 
how do I get in? And then they have to go back to their boards and go through the And four the years later, we've gone <laughs> through the risk management. <laughs> yes, it's, <laughs> it's like I'm one, I'm one approval away, and meanwhile, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm walking out of Shady Acres with my walker. <laughs> that's great, Tom. I'm glad to see you finally got it done. But it's you know, it, that's that's part of it. So I mean, you have to be patient, you know, and it, it, it will, it's going to happen. Like I said. You can't, you, pro, you can't stand in the way of progress. You can't stand in the way of freedom. You can't stand in the way of love, and you can't stand in the way of, of progress. It is going to happen. Progress is going to happen. I don't think there's any better way to end this than that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. I absolutely love the conversation. I awesome. You guys are doing. You. Great. Thanks so much. I'm actually here just to see you go scootering to your next generator, to your next uh, destination. Honestly, they got, some, they got some pictures of me on a, on a scooter, and I can already see it. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you haven't already left a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please do that now. Spotify just added ratings, so please go ahead and click that five star. I'll see you guys next time.